Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to um, another session um, delivered by Media Savvy. This is a brand new um, crafty creative series. Um, it's called Crafty Type, and it's a crafty, um, crafty creative series um, where we explore typography, fonts, how they're designed, um, all the all the background and history. To uh, well, not all of it, obviously, but um, a lot of the hi history and um, really just to give us a bit of an understanding on fonts and where they come from and how they how they're designed and made. Okay, I'm your um, I'm your tutor for today's session. My name's Leon, um, and like I say, this is just a tester, a tester or taster into what we can be looking at uh, moving forward over the next um, five weeks after 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 today. So. What I'm going to do today, guys, is I'm going to give you an overview into um, into typography, into um, font design. Um, but I'm going to try and do it in a different way. Okay, so typography is something I've been really interested in over uh, many, many years. I've been interested in it, but not interested to a point where um, I've actually done anything about it, really. I've um, downloaded some really cool fonts that I found online to create graphic design um and different um different bits of design but i've never really explored it any more than that really um so there's such a um a range of um, resources out there in order to download um and access um download and, and, and access your um um, and enhance your designs okay and there's lots and lots of fonts out there by some really really cool graphic um, designers but I know absolutely nothing about um, typography really apart from typo typography um, is the design of characters I guess so what I'm using this session this session and then the, the five sessions after this taster uh, for our crafty crafty type series i'm going to use the this is an opportunity to explore myself um what typography is and what how we can design and create our own font but what i'm going to try and do um is i'm going to try and sift through all the terms and technicalities and stuff like that i want to try and make it as creative for us as possible okay so that's what we've got to look forward to today it's a taster session for um, our crafty type series which will be um, delivered every um, Thursday from one o'clock till five and uh, one o'clock sorry till three o'clock every every Thursday from next week and this is just an overview on what you can expect okay so just um, just where we are now guys um, we've been um, looking at changing our online enrollment forms um, over the past um, month or two now. Um, and we've got we've got a, a version up there which is, makes it so much easier for you guys to fill in. Um, traditionally, we had an, um, a PDF and it was a bit um, clunky, um, but we, we're rolling out this on, um, online enrollment form now for you guys to, um, to fill in in order to um, access the rest of these co um, courses online, okay? I'm going to quickly talk you through that, um, and and then we'll um, we'll move on to the, the the course today or the session today and what you can look forward to in the in the next few few weeks. Okay, so as you, as you can see up here, I'm the tutor on this course. This is my contact details. If any of you guys have got any issues or want to contact me for any uh, any reason, you want to um, discuss anything, please um, contact me here. Um, and that should be it. Um, bring up your um, your email account or your email, and you can contact me that way. Um, if you want to find out any more information about our courses or this course in particular, just drop us an email. Okay, but our on online form looks a bit like this. Okay, so all you need to do is click on the um, the link here that is part of this presentation. This presentation will um, I'll put the link of this presentation. Um, on our description in our YouTube um, description so you can just easily access that um, the enrollment form looks a little bit like this once you click the link 
Um, and all we're asking for is your basic information, your email, um, name, telephone number, etc. Um, just fill it in as you um, as you as you feel fit. Um, we do need your name, email address, and contact number, um, so we can contact you um, and, and and log you and re register register you on our courses. Everything else um, isn't mandatory fields. Um, I'm just going to quickly talk. I'm going to just put a. a a dummy email just so I can talk you through it um, okay that should be okay um, I'm gonna make put my name in there my telephone number 0707 hopefully that's all right okay and then we just ask for emergency contact um, so that's pretty straightforward um emergency contact with just like um, any other course that you would um you, you might enroll on um it's just so we, you know if it, if if you if we need to contact somebody on behalf of you then we've got their contact information okay um any additional support that you might need um for example um um how can i how can i it's a bit, a little bit different, different now because we we're, um, we're on quite um, a lot of our content is virtual. But any additional support could mean um, you might um, require more visual um, descriptions, for example. Um, and by you including that in your in your enrollment form means I can um, add um, a, well, cater to your needs um, as, a, as I develop the course moving forward okay and anything else that you might have um, any support that you might need in there just whack it in um, my learning styles again this really helps um, us um, kind of um, build our courses okay um, and really we need to really have a little idea on what, where your starting point is on the course so are you like me? Are you starting right at the bottom here um, and know a little bit about the course um, or do you know quite a lot? OK, um, if you know quite a lot, then obviously I'll need to up my game a bit and I'll need to find a bit more um, in depth um, um, information in, in regards to typography. Um, so uh, obviously you're, you're getting a little bit more from the course than somebody who doesn't doesn't know. OK. Um, and then intended destination. What do you want to do after the course? You want to do more courses? Are you a job seeker? Um, would you like to go into education? Are you going into education after this? What, whatever that that is, um, whatever um, you fall into, which category there, just just tick that. And that's it. That's the form filled in. Okay, so it probably takes less time than it took for me to describe it, and I think that was about five less than five minutes. Okay, so. If you could um, please fill that in, um, that'll be fantastic, and that that'll allow you access to all the other course, um, all the other um, sessions in this series moving forward. I'll send you the links um, privately in an email. Okay, you just submit that, and then happy days. So that's the course enrollment form, the new course enrollment form, um, and then at the end we've got a um, end of session survey, which is the the one that we've been always been using. Um, which again is um, I need to change the title to that. Sorry, so I'll do that um, um, by the end of the session. Um, but basically, all the information is the same. Okay, has your subject knowledge improved? Um, kind of how did you how did you um, feel today's session went for you? Um, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's our form. That's a bit of the boring stuff out of the way. Um, okay. So, like I mentioned before, um, craft. We have a crafty creative series that we've we've launched, and the the first course in that crafty creative series was crafty illustrations. Okay, so crafty illustrations. Um, we looked at how to take your take your um your hand drawn sketches, um, use computer programs to um kind of turn them into a, a digital. Um, representation of your artwork um, and then what you can do with that artwork moving forward okay so crafty creative series is kind of a it's a ev evolving kind of series of courses but what I, I want to try and aim to do here as, as a tutor and the lead tutor on the crafty creative series 
what I want to try and do is I want to try and kind of broaden our horizons a little bit. So what I've found in design and a lot of learning is that um, you don't fully appreciate something until you, you understand a little bit more. Or, and, and I don't want to talk on behalf of everyone, but that's probably me more. Um, and it's probably a lot, quite a few people. But when you've got an insight into something, you start picking up on other things. Okay. And that's what I want to try. I want the aim of Crafty Creatives to, to be. I want us to um, pick up a little bit more of an understanding so we can, when we would navigate in around our daily lives and go, oh, yeah, that, that um, bit of artwork there, we, I can see how that was created. Or, or I can see that that um typography there is like custom bit of typography and that's there it's got like the feet on there so that must be a serif font and just give you a bit more of understanding and a bit more of an appreciation of of, of the creative world in which we live in and the creative world which a lot of the time um, we just kind of zip zip through um, and don't interact with it that much there's lots and lots of creativity out there um, and hopefully um, crafty creatives and crafty type will um, give us a little bit more of an understanding. All right. So as you can see, this is a course layout. Okay. So we're here at the first column, if you like, and this is a taster session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going <clears> to <throat> not really going to explain all the in-depth bits because to, to be fair, I, f I think it, all that stuff for me is quite boring. So what I want to do is I want to, Design a bit of um, some typography, design a font, and I'm using the word font and typography um, interchangeable, but there are differences, but it doesn't really matter for now. Well, I'm going to design a font on this whiteboard behind me. I'm going to take a picture of it, I'm going to put it into the computer, and I'm going to show you the process that would be involved in um, creating your own font, um, and then um, that would be today's session. I might be a bit ambitious, I don't know. Um, but we're going to try and do that. I want to show you how simple it is to do. Now, guys, like I said, I'm not a, a, a typography designer, okay? So the things that I'm going to show you today are the things that I've learned and what I'm um, over the last week or so when I've been preparing for this course. Now, the, trying to describe me as a, as a creative individual, when I'm doing my research, there's a lot of information out there and the internet is a fantastic place to learn, okay? But in in the nature of the internet and the accessibility of information and all that good stuff, sometimes I get a bit overwhelmed, okay? So what I'm try gonna try and do is, I'm just gonna try and sift through all the jargon. I'm just gonna try and show you the process. And then each week, session one, two, I'm gonna just show you a little bit more, I'm gonna show you something else. Um, but what we're going to do today, really, we're just, going to design a font that's it and I'm not going to really talk about the technicalities that I've picked up or I've learned I'm just going to design that font I'm going to whack it into the computer do a bit of jiggery pokery and then create the font from there okay I might slip in a few little bits of um, interesting things that I've learned um, but throughout the course of the next five sessions we're going to break down our original artwork our original kind of font that we designed on this this board here and then we're going to look at how we can improve it and learning little bits and little little by little we're going to improve that we're going to tweak it we're going to adjust it so from our taster session we've got one font that we created just out of um an artistic kind of um passion and then at session five hopefully we'll have a bit more information about typography um and we're gonna we're gonna have um, amended that original artwork based on the information that we've learned throughout the rest of the course so that is the ambition okay so there's a lot to um for me to deliver there's a lot for me to kind of sift through to try and present to you um and like i say there might be some contradictions as we move on because um i'm learning this as well okay if you've got any comments guys please put them in our comments here on the right hand side um in our youtube um chat um and then let's um let's crack on with today's session shall we so let me just see how, there we are okay brilliant so 
Um, right, so creating your own typeface. Font, typeface, we're just going to look at the whole, the whole idea of a font and a typeface as one thing at the minute, okay? And I'm going to strip it down. I'm going to describe the differences later on in the next few weeks, all right? But a font, what is a font, okay? So a font is all the, the characters that you see in front of you on this screen. A font is letters. Um, it is um, punctuation, grammatical um, apostrophes, hashtags, at signs and things like that and if you um look at for example what i'll do is quickly yeah let me do something let me create a um open up a, a notepad a word pad just to explain in a, a little just a little bit more okay so when you type some words here so i'm gonna say hello if you want Welcome to Crafty Type. Okay, so these are all the characters, and I've got a bit of, uh, I'll put a apostrophe at the end, just add a bit more punctuation. So change the way that those characters look um, in Word or um, Google Documents or something like that, um, or WordPad, which I'm in now. We can change the way that font looks by um, clicking this little download arrow here. Um, it usually has font or type or style up there. And then these are all the different styles that this this text here can um, take take on, okay? So that when I'm talking about fonts or when I'm talking about typography or when I'm talking about type, it's just the way these characters look, okay? And as you can see, if I copy that, I'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see it better. Um, put that as 20 as well, okay? And I'll change that to something completely different. Maybe that's not completely different, but something like that maybe. It's exactly the same words, but completely um, different way of looking at them okay and let's see if we can have try and kind of see a few examples while um we're on the line now okay let's see if i can find something to show you some um some examples so great examples of typography let's see what we can see here so the reason why we have different styles of font is so they can be applied to different designs different um to send out different messages i guess so um if you're looking for something a little bit like kind of quirky like this for example um where there's loads of actually a few quite a few different fonts in there um but if you're on the nhs website for example and if we go to the nhs website can you see how the fonts are quite different here they're quite they're very clear, very easy to read because they're trying to get across um, clear information. So the the choice of font depends on the kind of message that you're trying to get across. Okay, and I'm going to stop there because I feel as I'm going down that rabbit hole of too much information. But let's switch it up a bit. Let's make um, let's look at some interesting stuff, right? So this is a go-to place that I, I go to every time I want to create a new bit of artwork, okay? I have never, ever created my own font before, okay? And this is why I wanted to do this course, to try and learn a little bit more about it. Um, and I've got an understanding now. There's probably going to be a few blips along the way. But um, prior to that, if I was creating some artwork, creating some graphics, I will go onto this website, thefont.com. There's also another one called 1001 Fonts. And then what I would do is, um, with my design idea, either as a sketch or um, as a draft on the computer or in my head, I might know, right, I'm looking for, um, and I really like graffiti, so I'm looking for um, graffiti. Um, so I, for an example, if I was doing a flyer for a graffiti art exhibition. Um, so we can look for graffiti on here. So graffiti.
and I've searched the word that I'm after and as you can see all these different styles here are actual fonts that you can download and you can download them for free okay some of them will have um, as you can see here you can donate donate to the author or the person who's created that artwork um, and you also need to check what the um, commercial rights are for them but again without going down a rabbit hole of um, boring stuff all this is available for you to download okay and as you can see there's 32 fonts in the graffiti style okay and I'm going to show you the process of how to download one of these now, okay? Um, what we are going to aim to create um, in today's session and the sessions moving forward after our taster today is we're going to look at not creating a, a graffiti style font unless you want to do that, um, but creating a font that we can install on our computer and then actually write a letter if we wanted to in that font style. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to have a quick look here. Um, I'm going to download this. I'm going to download this one here. Okay, I'm going to show you the process of um, installing this font. So you find it in your folder. Okay, I'm just going to copy this to my desktop. So you download the folder. The folder will have appear in your downloads and if you double click in there if, if you're using your PC this is the true type font file and this is the file that we will be creating not this particular file but this fi um, file format is what we'll be creating to create our own fonts okay so I'm going to copy this by pressing Control and C I'm going to move this to me um, desktop and there's the font now this font isn't installed on my com computer at the minute it's just a file on my computer um, waiting to be installed so if you right click on there and click install okay it's installing that font now so as an example if we copy this um we move down one i'm going to change this now hopefully that berlin um, font has installed and there it's a Berlin graffiti it's called okay so there we have it guys we've got three different styles of text okay that has three different looks about them three different feelings um, and provoke three different feelings um, and could be applied to three different um, bits of graphical artwork okay and we could write a letter or we could write an email um or anything that requires um word processing using this font okay or any of the other fonts for that matter okay then let's move on a little bit so f during the course of my research um I'll, what i'm going to do is i'm going to um, update this um document and this is a, a google slides document um that has lots of links to the, all the things that I've, I've picked up, okay? Um, and this isn't um, the whole presentation for today. It's going to be bits of information, bits of stuff that I've learned um, throughout my research. I'll, I'll whack in here anything useful. Um, again, sifting through all that, um, the, all those resources um, to try and give you the stuff that I think is quite important and try and provoke your interest um to for then you to then look um yourself okay so this is what i was quite excited about okay um this um slide upon my research i heard somebody on a video talk about drawing out a brief to design your fonts or your typefaces or whatever you want to call them um thinking about what you want it to look like Visualizing your typeface, blah, blah, blah. I heard things about glyphs. I heard things about ascenders. I heard things about apexes of four, um, characters. I heard things about ligatures, gadzooks. I heard that this morning. I mean, it was interesting at the time because I was thinking, what on earth is that word? I completely forgot what that means now. A ligature, again, another, and type font what's the difference okay 
typeface. I'm not going to cover any of that today, all right? So you can breathe a sigh of relief. We might pick up on some of these bits and pieces. And hopefully, if you're interested um, in, in this topic enough, you'll probably pick up a lot of these yourself. But what we're going to do really is we're going to, we're going to start the, getting straight to the board and we're going to start designing some artwork um, without really having a clue about typography. <laughs> so so let, let's get cracking, shall we? Um, let me just bring up the camera here. Um, that's better. Cool. Got me pens. Now what I'm going to do is um, there has been a few um, cool things that I picked up um, during a couple of courses and I've put the links to some of the courses that I've been looking into and um, following and um, the little short two hour courses and things like that. I've put links to those on this um, on this presentation. OK, so you can have a look and um, look at them in your own leisure. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start creating some some letters on, on here the alphabet basically and i'm going to talk through hopefully we'll just figure it out i guess um i don't know if if i feel like i'm i'm waffling on i'm getting boring i'm going to um i'll stop and i'll move on okay so hopefully you guys can see um i'll drop this down a little bit that's better cool so one of the cool things that i hope i'm just going to double check um and bring up our Just checking our um, chat. If anybody's got anything to say, um, please um, feel free to to comment in our chat on our, on our YouTube. Okay, I'll just um, I keep flicking to it just to make sure um, I'm answering any of your questions. Okay, so one cool key thing that I learned um, this week when I was looking into typography was um, basically you need to draw out each and every each and every character and font that you want to kind of picture okay you want um each and every character that you want so if you look at your keyboard um you've got one to one to nine plus zero if you want to use the minus and plus then obviously you need to put all your symbols in as well your bracket your square brackets and things like that if you want to use your symbols but all i'm going to do is um the letters a to Z, okay, in in a type of style, um, and I'm just going to make it up. I might have a little, um, I'll have a little sketch of um, some words, okay. So um, one other key thing, what uh, that somebody brought up was um, um, H O R Y, I think. These letters here have different elements to them. So we've got straight lines, we've got horizontal lines, we've got curves, and then we've got kind of a kind of a um, diagonal line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and first of all get an idea of what I want my text to look like. Okay, so I'm going to write this in different styles to try and. Um, picture what the style is going to look like. And then I'll write out um, write out the um, write out the alphabet, I guess. So let's try. Um, I'm gonna try a really blocky one using just these four characters here. Nice bold blocky one. Okay, I'm just going to do maybe two or three. Um, um, let's try a bit, be a bit more creative with it, shall I? Um, let's try, uh, try a bit more of a. Um, 
like a handwritten one. Now, I've never ever done calligraphy before, so this probably looks really terrible, but I'm just playing around here, so not really that bothered. Um, I'll do a couple more. Um, Okay, so we've got a few different ideas here. Um, let's do, I'm going to do a couple more because um, I think these are quite boring. So let's um, try and be a bit more creative than this. Um, let's see what I can do. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, guys, so just bear with me. Um, Okay, I'm going to go for this one. I think this is um, quite simplistic um, and I think I like the idea that you can read that one um, better than you can read the others, okay? Now, like I said, I'm not a, a graphic designer in terms of designing um, artwork and um, text, so um, a type, typography or font, so I'm just going to go with this. What you're going to see, I'm just preparing you now, guys, for what you're going to see over the next um, five weeks. Um, you're not going to probably see a quality typo typo typography or quality ty typographical design. That's not what I'm doing this course for. I am not a um, graphic designer that designs um, typography, but what I want to try and do is just show you the process um, and try and simplify it down as best as I can, okay? upon the research that I'm doing. So we're gonna go for this blocky one here, okay? And all I'm going to do now is I'm gonna write down the alphabet in a style that looks a little bit like that, okay? So it's a bit, of, um, it's, a, it's quite blocky. And as you can see here, all this is uppercase. So we'll have to do this. We don't have to, and I won't do it well um, while we're live, but if you wanted the lowercase as well, you'll need to do the lowercase variant because each, what we're doing is we need to create a representation of each um, scenario when um, in each character and each scenario within a character. So if it's not the case, you might want to, you want a capital letter, um, but if, uh, if at the beginning of a sentence, but if it's um, in the, the rest of the letters will be lowercase, obviously. Um, it doesn't need to be like that, but it depends on, you'd need to have a, kind of a clear understanding as, as to what you want the, the, um, the font for. Now one cool thing I picked up was um, from somebody who was showing, um, sh showing us online how to create um, and design your typography was when you're doing your alphabet, so I'm going to just do my alphabet now, he suggested doing n numerous letters okay so you can what we're going to do after we've done this and we've done the whole um alphabet just uppercase um he suggested doing numerous letters because what we're going to do after that is we're going to take this into the computer we're going to take a photograph of this um and we're going to then choose the individual letters that we think um is most attractive okay so i'm going to crack on creating me Okay, and 
so on and so forth. Now, I'm um, not going to waste time doing all of those um, all of those letters. Um, but what I am going to do is we've got. I'm going to have show you some other cool things that I found. Um, and then in our break, in um, about twenty minutes time, um, we're going to. Um, I'll I'll get some pictures. I'll update that um, that board with the with the letters on, and I'll um, I'll get that into the computer. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward, really, um, when it comes to capturing your artwork. Okay. You don't need to have it on a whiteboard like me. You can um, you can um, sketch it on on a bit of, uh, in a sketch um, sketchbook. You can um, manipulate other um, other fonts that are out there. Okay, so you could type in um, you could type in. Um, let me quickly show you something. Um, you could use an existing art. Um, existed existing font sorry so let's say I'm in Illustrator at the moment um, Adobe Illustrator and this is one way that you can um, create your own fonts you can do it in a program like this I'm not really going to talk about it in too much detail because um, on the software because it's not what we're going to do today but A B C D E F G Okay, so what I'm doing really, forget about all these different buttons that look really confusing. Um, all I'm doing is I've, I've created the um, the alphabet using this font, um, Lucida Bright. Okay, and what you can do. You can create your own variations of these as well. Okay, so for example, just as a quick example, and I'm not going into the, the details of how we're doing it, but um, how I'm doing it at the minute. But you might think, right, I like the way these, I'm going to call them feet for now. Um, I like the way these are, but what I would like to do on all the feet, I would like to stretch them out a little bit more. And then you could call this font something like Lucida Long Feet or something like that, you know. Um, and I found a really cool, um, really cool story. I can't remember what um, bit of artwork it was. I'm I'm sitting here talking away um, here, and I'm not really showing you my screen. So let me just quickly go back again for you guys. I'll copy this. Uh, Apologise, I do have a tendency to waffle on sometimes. Um, all I did was I, I put the put some text into this program, Photoshop, resized it so you could see it, um, and then I'm not going to talk about the the rest really because it's not really that important. But this is a specific font already installed on my computer, and then what all I've um, done here is I started to manipulate it. Okay, and. The thing that made me laugh was um, there was a really cool um, graphic designer that I think his name was Hoffman. That was it. And he designed, I'm going to actually bring it up for you now. Um, let me see. find it in the um, presentation here this guy um, Hoffler sorry Jonathan Hoffler okay and this guy with um, Tobias um, Freer designed um, the logo not the logo sorry the font that you saw in um, a barber's campaign Okay, it was called Gotham the font and he um, and Tobias designed that okay but I think it was him who also um, I think it was a New York subway Look 
should be Okay, I don't know whether this is the right story, but basically there was a fancy, fancy um, graphic designer who utilized an, a font. I think it might have been Helvetica was a font. And all he did was he changed um, one thing to the, to the um, font. And I'm going to try and show you exactly what he did. Um, Right, this was the font. Helvetica, hopefully, I've got it installed on my computer. It's a font that. Um... Okay, I don't have it installed on my computer, but let's say that is Helvetica. This isn't Helvetica, but all. Um, designer did and I say all um, um, I'm not criticizing his work but I'm just um, what I'm trying to do here is just to try and demonstrate how simplistic and effective something can be um, so he took a font let's say it was Helvetica and all he did was he took A little dot above the eye and turned it into a circle and for his application it was for the New York subway and um, the wayfinding posters and things like that um, it suited it really well um, and that's all he did look how actually it does have a bigger impact a completely different impact but he utilized exactly the same same font okay so this is one way of doing it as well you can create your artwork from scratch like what you see behind us or you can mess about with um other other artwork here um using something like um illustrator or photoshop or something like inkscape that we discussed in um in crafty illustrations now i want to show you a video um this video i found really really interesting and it kind of fits with this idea in order to appreciate something, we need to have some understanding. Okay, so I'm just going to show you this video now because I think this is um, it's really cool. Um, and it is by um, I think it's by Hoffler. Um, is it Hoffler? No, it's Beirut. Now this guy here is um waiters always look at me and think that i'm gonna have a little salad pause that for a minute this guy that i'm gonna show you now is supposed to be one of like the, the kings of um graphic design okay and i'm just here we go let's see all right so this guy is one of the kings of um typography or graphic design or government form and I'm just going to go to, I think it's just, bef he's talking about his, um, he's talking about um, how he got into typography and how he got into, um, into um graphic design okay and i thought this is really really nice so um hope you guys like it as well this is the uh logo that changed my life about 50 years ago i was seven years old so i'm a graphic designer and i became a graphic designer around now 50 years ago and what happened was i was going to get a haircut with my dad uh i was in the passenger side of the car he was driving and um we stopped at a light there was a construction site over to our right, and he said, oh, look at that, isn't that interesting? And I said, what? He says, well, the way, look at, you see where it says Clark on the side of the truck? 
and there was a, a, like one of those forklift trucks, those trucks that do this. I don't know if you call them something different here. You know what, you know what I'm talking about? Okay, like a forklift truck. And he said, um, you see where it says Clark? And I said, yeah. And he said, look at how the L is lifting up the A, just like the truck does. And I thought, oh my God. <laughs> oh, I, I, like, how, how long has this been happening? Is this... Is this like everywhere? What's going on? And the idea, the idea that someone had sort of had to stick the name on the side of a truck at a construction site and had taken the pains to put in that little moment of pleasure and surprise and delight just for someone like me to enjoy. I was like, I don't know what that is or what it's called, but that's what I want to do. And, I, and that's what I ended up doing. So I've been... So, hey guys, um, this... I mean, it's a really, really good example of how the little things every day um, that are around us, um, how we just walk past them, we sometimes oh, we, we overlook them, we don't notice them. And that example there of, um, if I can go back to watch that, um, go back a little bit, see that logo. How many times have we actually walked past something that is quite clever, but we never really appreciate it? We live quite a fast-paced life lifestyle now, don't we? We're always thinking about what we need to do next or what we've done, um, and we never really appreciate where we are in that moment. And it was really cool how his dad, when he was sitting in his car, kind of brought that to um, Michael's attention there. Something that he may have... Well, he's obviously changed the course of Michael's life by suggesting that um, and pointing that out to him. But if he didn't, he would have just cracked on and maybe became some sort of fire, firefighter or a nurse or, I don't know, um, a swimmer or whatever, you know. Um, and look how simple that is, you know. And that's these um, type of these graphic designers go to a lot of trouble and a lot of um, effort and to develop something that has gives that artwork and gives that um, kind of logo or whatever uh, a special look about it okay so I thought it was really interesting that um, and hopefully by the end of um, these um, these sessions um, maybe you'll learn a little bit more about typography as well now, um, before we break, we're going to break at um, 2 o'clock uh, for 10 minutes, and I'm going to crack on with me, me a little alphabet behind us. Um, I just want to point you to um, um, the, I think it might be this one. Yeah, so Michael um, was responsible for this brand, for developing this brand. And this is a company that Michael um, has. And it a, co it's a company called knots.com. Okay, and as you can see, this typeface, this font, or whatever you want to call it um, now, um, look how sketchy it is, look how it how um kind of freehand it is. And he developed this brand um based on um trying to create a friendly feel um to a family run business, okay. So I'm gonna quickly um show you um a little another little clip from that talk um, that Michael was given um, and he's talking you through the process of creating that um, that brand or developing that brand and hopefully that'll give you a bit more of an insight as to what um, goes on behind the scenes behind the scenes of those brands and um, um, fonts and um, type, you know um, yeah brands I guess um, that you walk past we might all walk past every day okay so let's have a Look at that. I think it's fine. So I have my brand new always. Just bear with me a minute. I have to get. And I've been using it a lot. Yeah. The idea that some. Okay. That's it's five minutes there destruction for a moment and kind of just think about how to have fun with a brown cardboard box. So I'll talk about some projects I did that demonstrate a couple of simple, simple principles. Um, there's this guy named Jeff Braverman. His company has been selling nuts, peanuts, in uh, 
uh, New Jersey for generations, three generations. His, gra- his father, his uncles, his great-grandfather, his grandfather, the Newark, New Jersey Nut Company. Jeff uh, is a college-educated MBA. He worked on Wall Street. Then he decided he was going to take this business online. And you can tell he did that because the nuts now say nuts online, right? <laughs> so, but that wasn't Jeff's big idea. What he really wanted was the website nuts.com. Now, nuts.com may have been a nuts.com, then he decided to redesign these packages. This is a fun job because Jeff said, I only want to do one thing. The packages aren't sold in stores, they're not on shelves. You order them online, you say, I want this many nuts, this many uh, raisins, this many... So he just wanted people to be happy when they got that box. And so see those little characters dancing on top of where it says nuts online? That's his whole family. Uh, There's like him and his uh, sister and his brother, and like these cartoon characters are all part of the lore, right? So... We decided to make it feel personal and fun, instead of doing a corporate identity, we do an anti-identity, do it all by hand. So I painted the word nuts over and over and over again, started to look funny after a while. Uh, Did a whole alphabet that we call nutcase. Um, And then kind of uh, uh, commissioned uh, Design and Daba uh, hero and uh, alumnus uh, Christoph Neiman to personify all these guys. That's my client Jeff, wearing an N for nuts hat. And so we just did this whole series of very simple packages. And the idea was that like the typeface let you kind of graffiti all over the packages, create a whole family like that. And then this brown cardboard box doesn't look like any delivery you'll get that week. It doesn't look like Amazon. It doesn't look like something from the post office. It looks like it only comes from one place. And their sales went way up just because people were so happy about getting nuts in these boxes. They didn't cost a single bit more to manufacture. And they were uh, uh, more recyclable, actually, than what they were doing before. So it just goes to show you that, this, again, this is as crummy a job, if you ask me. Well, not crummy, but it's sort of as limited and modest a job. And it seemingly is designing a ballot, but you can have some more fun with it, too. And- okay, guys. So that was a really good um, few-minute presentation on, on how that brand was developed, which I thought was quite, quite nice to give you a background and, and a little insight, if you don't already have one, as to how these brands, but how these fonts and type types are created, okay? Um, as you can see from, let's go back to here for a minute. As you can see, when we change our fonts, I don't know whether, if anyone's around back my age, they're like a little bit older than 21 and a little bit less um, less than 40. Um, when I was going to school, um, used to get things called CD-ROMs, okay, and used to have lots of information, and used to get encyclopedias and stuff like that. You also used to get fonts that you could install on your computer on your, using your CD, um, using a CD-ROM, okay, but now we download them all. Um, um, so the point, the purpose of, of that is um, that they're all, every computer will have different fonts installed on them. Some of them, some computers will have all the not the no i say normal ones the regular ones aerial you probably see that or on most computers you'll almost definitely see a times new roman um installed on um on some compute on your computers there's times new roman there these are just standard ones some of the more funky ones that you can see in this list here so um say maybe that one or let's say that one, or um, this one, for example, these might be um, um, installed um, after the computer, um, you've um, pulled your computer out of its box. Um, they might be about, might have been downloaded by myself on this computer for different purposes, okay? Um, but the, the point is that somebody had to create these, okay? And that, the, try to create them to create a different um, kind of visual of how these words are presented okay so um, we do have lots installed on our computer but sometimes um, it's quite nice to um, do our do our own and one thing I was thinking about what, what for somebody who isn't a graphic designer um, why would we want to do this you know why would we want to create our own font um, there could be you might want to kind of um take your child's handwriting for example you know when your child is um learning to the the words and they're learning to write their own name for example how cool would that be to um get them to do the alphabet and practice the alphabet and create a font for their 
for their um for that with their handwriting so you could have like say eight year old um i don't know leon eight year old font um leon at 12 year old font and you could have these fonts that could be available forever um that could be your child's handwriting oh that was right quite a cool idea if you were uh, going back to our previous um series crafty illustrations where we've done design some artwork for um an, uh, an invite if you're inviting somebody to your birthday party or something like that if you wanted to write your own font um and use your own handwriting but then you wanted to type um bring it in the computer and and have that font so you could type type your own um words using your font your own handwriting um that'd be a cool way cool um idea as well uh, it could be a cool idea to um have your own handwriting installed as digitally on the computer because once you've done it it's there forever isn't it and it's easier to to then generate you might think well why would i do my own handwriting when i could just write something by hand well obviously the beauty of digital is that um you can always save it you can always edit it you can edit it quickly and um you can create copies of it and things like that whereas if you wrote um a journal if you wrote your own um novel for example in um in let's say you wrote your own diary for a year if that diary got damaged for example then it's lost forever and lost forever so um that is the benefit of like connecting our digital life to our kind of real hands-on kind of um creative side okay so i'm going to wrap up for um the first half of the session hopefully it's um kind of um whet your appetite as to um what we can be looking forward to in um our in our crafty um type series this is gonna gonna have a little 10 minute break and um in that 10 minutes i'm gonna crack on with these um these um the alphabet here and then I'll, um but by the time you come back um at say 10 past two i'll have them i've took a picture of them put them on the computer and i'll show you how we can take it from there okay so hopefully that's um like I say that's um wet your whistle if you like um and you're interested in learning a little bit little bit more but the, the the process is very simple draw it down there and take a picture put it into the computer and i'm going to show you that process also got a few um cool other videos that i'll um i'll show you little bits of and i'll make available um after today's session all right so we're going to have a 10 minute break now if we come back at 10 past two okay thanks guys
Hi guys and welcome back to um, uh, the second half of our um, crafty type taster session. So in crafty type we are looking at fonts, type of, and typography and different styles of fonts and different ways that um, we can create them and um, what's involved okay just to try and give us a bit of a more of an appreciation of what there are you know what what there is around us um, when we go about our daily business okay and if you are interested um, I want to try and show you how simple it is to um, create your own fonts and how creative you can be with it okay so um, talk to you a little bit about um, really like the kind of I didn't really talk about too much about the um the ins and outs of typography and i think we'll get to all that like throughout throughout the next few weeks but we've um just i just showed you a few little things um a few little videos to um kind of show you the thought process that goes behind creating um creating typography or, or um fonts if you like um what i've done is um i've um created behind me here um, an alphabet that I'm going to then take a photograph of and bring in to the, um, um, into the computer um, and hopefully um, hopefully create some nice, art, nice artwork from, from there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now I'm just going to quickly take photographs and um, I'll finish this off. Now I've put some smiley faces on the bottom there um, to um why did it do that uh, have a look there let's have a look two minutes uh, okay yeah so um what i did was guys um i've um put the um a few little things at the bottom here and that's um everything in this blue square so um i'll just quickly explain why i've done that everything in here i've added some little bits of symbolism there and then i've created the a b and c and d um recreated them um because i thought they were a bit too thick in comparison to the other text um or the, the other for, um styles of lettering okay um i thought um, when i was doing this i thought this looked a little bit too boring um so um and it doesn't look any different it doesn't look very different to any of the other bits of artwork uh, bits of um fonts that you can download online so um what i did was i thought oh, well how what, what do you want to try try and create something like a little bit happier, a little bit fun, a bit quirky. So I've created these little um, kind of um, emotions, a little like smiley faces. And what I want to try and do is put little elements of like a smile in each of these characters, but I'll just take elements of that, maybe copy elements and put them next to each, each of the characters. Or moving forward, put um, a little smiley face at the big, um, on, on the upper case text and then when we develop the lowercase in the next few weeks um the, the lowercase might not have it but i thought to try and like make it a little bit better um that's what i was going to do so that's that's what i did there um so what i need to do now is uh, i'm not sending a text message or anything else um what i'm doing is i'm sharing that um that message um sharing sharing the um the photograph with myself there's a the photograph of the um of the text i'm going to send that to myself in an email um which i'm going to do now obviously you could link your phone up to your um just bear with me one minute you could link your phone up or you could send it via bluetooth or something like that um I'm just sending an email because I think it's, easy. it's one of the easiest ways. So if you go to my emails now, um, we should have an email from myself coming up in a minute. Um, 
but while that's coming across what I want to show you is um, some really nice examples of some type typography that doesn't look anything like what you see over my shoulder there so um, I don't know the background of this I just thought I'll do a bit of um, um, googling while we were um, on our little break um, and I just I've just noticed the name there that uh, that seems to be a common name um, okay so this here is um here's some nice examples okay and I'm not going to break it down because I don't know enough about how to break break it down but I'll point things out that I might notice so um what we have here by the looks of it is um text here so s n u z z z z i um and it's like got a, 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 a massive perspective on it there and that looks like a word down here u l u i g i and then don't know what that is but it all disappears into this kind of backspace there which that looks really cool like you really probably drawn into that i mean if that was times new roman um yeah, I mean, you would have um, turned the computer off a second after looking at it. Look how interesting that looks, and that's some that's a font that somebody's um, some typography that somebody's created there. Um, just going to um, show you this next one. This one's pretty pretty cool here. So this is about a, this is a burger, um, ketchup. I can't see what that says. Mr. Oh, mustard, sorry, cheese, burger, bacon, lettuce, onion. And these, this is a font, you know, this is something somebody's created. You could, if you had access to that font file, you could download it into your computer and you could type away. Um, brush text, look how cool this is. All the different colors in there. Um, again, we probably won't be able to do anything this elaborate. Um, well, I, I, cer I certainly won't be able to, but. Hopefully this kind of sparks your interest and maybe you could do something with this cool once you look into it a bit more. Um, this one is really cool because this is the um, finished article and this is the person here, Tobias Hall, his name is, the, the artist. He's created the artwork. There's a um, 2D version of that and then he's added the perspective to it to make it 3D. Then he's shading it in, adding his outline details, and there's a finished article which I presume he either takes into um, Illustrator or a um, 3D uh, a um, graphical package um, to digitize it, or he might have even um, rendered it. When I say rendered, coloured, coloured it in, in um, by hand himself. Um, he has like a kind of 3D glasses look there but actually it's not at all is it that's um stitching it looks like stitching and then this is a really nice play on text as well isn't it look there's a big t there and then this i'm going to call it the stem that might not be the right term we'll probably learn as we go on throughout the course whether that's the right term or not but that stem there has got the text involved there so Text doesn't need to be boring looking at these, you know, it can be really, really interesting. Um, and it makes you want to look at it, doesn't it? It makes you want to under like examine it in a little bit more detail than just a bit of boring text. Um, look at that there, type tools. And there's some different bits of tools to create the letter A, B, all the way down. Now, somebody... There, they were injecting some kind of dye or something. A bubble wrap, that is. That's brilliant. Um, so each bubble um, was injected with some kind of with food color in there, look, to create a letter. Um, or I think it was a number there. That is absolutely fantastic. Bubble wrap type. So it just shows you now, this is, this is a really, really good example that text doesn't need to be by hand. You know, fonts don't doesn't need to be drawn by hand. You can actually use three D elements here, and this is so creative. I mean, I never ever have thought of anything like that. And I'm so glad that I've showed you this because, um, hopefully you guys will be able to. It'll just kind of open your mind a little bit to what is possible. You know, um, some retro kind of stuff going on here. 
Um, it's really nice hand drawn stuff there. Look at that. Look at the detail in that. You know, so if you've got an interest in, um, like, I don't know what you would call it, foliage or like um, floristry or anything like that, or sketching, um, doing like, say, landscapes or um, painting landscapes, could you incorporate landscape painting and doing some really cool text? I don't know, maybe. Um, so there's some really, really cool things here, look. And I'll put, I'll copy this because I, I haven't, I've just come across that over the, over the break. Um, and I'll um, whack that in our presentation, which will be a working presentation. Um, the boring stuff, keep that there. Put that at the bottom. At the bottom of our presentation, I've put some really cool links here and I'll, I'll show you, I'll talk to you about them in a bit more. Um, um, cool examples of typography. I'm going to take typography out. That's the term that it tend to use, but I'm going to say fonts for now. Okay, or slash typography. Whenever you hear me say typography, type, fonts, it just means letters, characters, you know, that's, that's all it means. Um, so, some really cool links in there. Um, I'll talk, talk to you them about the rest of the um, links a little bit later on, um, towards the end of the session. So, quickly um, have a... Go back to this maybe. Let's have a look. Just have a quick look for um, that email coming through. Um, see if I can send it to myself again. It doesn't seem to have come through. Here we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to waffle on um, basically as I'm doing this. Okay, um, I'm not going to explain all the details, um, and I've just learnt some of the techniques and the things myself anyway. So I'm not really going to pretend I know what I'm talking about. I'll, I've got the rough idea of how it's how we can achieve it. Okay. Um, and hopefully, with my limited knowledge, I'll be able to give you a bit of confidence um, that you can do the same thing. Right, so I'm going to go back to, I'll close that down a minute, um, change the scene back to here. Right, I'm going to go into my folder, I'm going to go into my downloads, and that's, um, the, the, that's the image there that I took of the board behind me, okay? So I'm going to copy this, um, here's an interesting one for you, so my sister is a psychologist, um, I always think it's quite interesting how to, to know um, more about yourself, so um, I thought I would do, um, I thought I would do a personality, <laughs> personality test on myself um, this weekend, go on. Um, and there's a point to this. Um, the point is organization. I'm trying to organize my files a little bit, a bit better. But I've done this um, test anyway. Um, and out of a hundred, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone out there, <laughs> I scored a whole one out of a hundred for organization. So um, I knew I wasn't very organized, but um, that was brilliant so um, I'm trying to be a bit more organized that's why I've um, so I've created um, a new folder and put me picture in there okay so what I'm going to use I'm going to use illustrator okay you can use any number of um, graphical packages out there okay and hopefully we'll get around to using maybe Inkscape as well we looked at Inkscape um, a few weeks ago um, and which is a, just an alternative to um, Illustrator. Um, 
you don't need to use Illustrator, you don't need to use Inkscape, but what we need to do to create our own fonts is we need to use a computer and, and those two methods are good ways of getting your text in to um into the computer okay and manipulating them so what i'm going to do is i'm not this isn't a lesson on how to use illustrator nor is it a lesson on how to use um any of the tools or 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 anything like that i'm just going to show you the process and i'm going to talk along the way and if there's anything important i think you might need to know um that was transferred across um other platforms on capturing your um, text or um, into the computer i'll bring it up okay so what i'm doing now is i'm going i've downloaded the file of the text behind me um I've <laughs> there we go another wonder i score a one in my um organization I've created two folders here, but never mind. Right, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do first. You can actually do it in um, Photoshop as well. Um, let's close that. Um, let's do just doing some um, artwork there for um, some like some handwritten scrolls earlier and that kind of um worked nicely but it, it was a bit too complicated um doing all the letters so i'm going to go into illustrator i have photoshop first um, and i'm going to enhance that image okay so what i want to do and this is quite important is I want to make sure that the white the background is white and the text is black okay so let's have a quick look at this I copy this um, so you can mess about with the levels in Photoshop if you're familiar with that um, and all I'm doing is enhancing the white background and I'm not really going to talk about all of that in detail really I'm just going to do it like I said and I'll just enhance that contrast so there we go that should do it I'm going to save that as actually I won't um, I'm going to save it I'll have to save it as save it as that JPEG I'm going to save over the top of that okay I do want to replace it yes okay so now in Illustrator what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that text uh, oh Okay, I'm going to place this into here, into Illustrator. So what we need to do is, basically, this is a photograph at the minute. Okay, you can't edit these texts. You can't write anything with it. It's just a photograph, just like any other photograph. One flat sheet of paper with squirrels, images in it. Okay, so what we need to do is convert that into um, what they call a vector-based uh, image. And um, if you... <coughs> excuse me, tuned in to our crafty um, illustration course a few weeks ago. That will um, give you a bit more insight into what that is. Um, but basically, the computer needs to identify each one of these elements. So what we need to do is we need to do some magic to this to so the computer can then pick out these individual bits. So we're gonna, there's a trace function in, um, in um, Illustrator. There's also one in Inkscape as well. And as you can see, it's now converted that image into these elements, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of the white. In fact, I'll select all the white. 
and delete this. There we go. Now we've got these individual elements, which is fantastic. Just what we need. But they're all, they're all still grouped together. So let's see if we can ungroup them. Okay. Let's move them out of the way a bit. Okay. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to create our alphabet A to Z with um, using the best or the one the things that I think are the, the, the bits that I think are the best okay um, there is actually absolutely no um, typography no, no typography theory in this the, um, apart, all I'm doing is showing you the process because the whole point of this course is by um, the end of the fifth week we're going to be manipulating this and changing this and improving it based on the the learning that's going to happen throughout the course okay so there are things that we should be doing now which we're not going to do um for example creating guidelines and things like that but we're not going to do any of that yet which all we're going to do is assemble our al alphabet okay as you can see my page is probably not going to be big enough so i'm just going to make the page or artboard a little bit bigger okay and let's just get cracking and i'm just going to create me alphabet okay a b I'm just choosing the best letters and hope this is going to work because um it's quite exciting i've never done this before um i've experimented preparing for this session um and i managed to get one um test done and it was and it worked um, so I was quite excited and I've always wanted to do this so I just want to show you how easy it is okay so literally guys um, this is Adobe Illustrator okay I will show you in the in the next couple of sessions I'll show you how to use Adobe Illustrator in order to get these out okay so I'm, I'll do, that's the reason why I'm not explaining all these bits and all these tools I'll do I'll spend a whole session on that um, in the next couple of weeks explaining what to do but basically all we've done is we've done some words or letters sorry and that could be on a notepad it can be um, on a piece of paper whatever we've took that took a picture of it we've put it into the computer and done a bit of magic and then now we're putting the um we've got these um these as individual objects okay so h i j j we'll use that j because that looks all right um, K L um, and I am choosing the ones that I think are, are good but even now I'm looking at them and thinking ah well these are can be improved and if you if anyone's watching this now online um, and I've got any suggestions on how you think these could be improved let me know and what I'll do is I'll um, I won't do it now but we'll incorporate those changes or your recommendations in future sessions all right um, uh, but I just wanted to create some really simple text for now okay um, and then I did think it was a little bit boring so that's why I've had a little smiley face isn't it um, T U V W X Y Z. Now I've only done this once before, so we're definitely going to get a bit of trial and error here. Um, so. See how we get on. Let's see what we can do with these. We can zoom in a bit, see if we can mess about with these smiley faces. Let's see if we can make this a bit smaller. I think it's really important that we all feel happy and smiley. So let's try and create a font that reflects that there. Eh? 
maybe like a little smiley maybe we can have this smiley face like appearing behind each of the um letters in different ways that looks all right and that's what we're going for all right at the minute because we just it's important that we we understand the process it's not about um in fact exactly how we do it or anything like that at the minute it's just really understanding the process of creating that bit of artwork you know so what i'll do here I might even get rid of that smiley face oh um group that use the eyes maybe have the eyes over the e like that maybe have the mouth in there somewhere and i'm just messing about here really have that underneath there maybe make that little touch smaller it's going to look more like an e possibly but never mind um again another little i really hope this works um that looks all right like i said i, I i'm not a graphic i'm not a typography designer so i think i can be happy with this put that one there I mean, what we can do that we could even make eyes out of these you know and that could be the nose um in future i don't know this is just a little idea and it's not um, take ourselves too seriously for now um and what we might find is that these smiley faces might um actually interfere with the way that the words here and um, the, the letters interact with each other when we make our words but we'll see again it's just a bit of a bit of a laugh let's have that, that there maybe so it looks as though like this character is hiding behind the text obviously there's an obvious one there boom um maybe just behind there Let's see a bit more. Um, little one there, one there. Go. you another obvious that's a little bit more interesting than than it was before and i dread to think what an actual graphic designer is thinking about while i've done at the minute but hey again it is not um, i've never claimed to be a graphic a graphical designer now or a designer that um who spends hours week developing a brand or anything like that you know it's just trying to get across this idea um on how we can create our own um so that's where we're going with that right okay right so we've done that i'll save it file save as crafty type i'll just put um what should we call it um happy type type happy that's what we can do there we go you right early on happy i'm going to save that for now um okay i'll put this lot here in a separate layer I'll put that in there hide that and i haven't on purpose put the explanation marks and things like that in yet okay um Oh, tell you what, do we hide that then? Yeah. Okay, so I've only done it the one way.
We've only done it the one way before that. Um, before, and I just want to check something. Want to? Let's just give it a go. Okay, I'm I'm going. <laughs> now, if you haven't um, been on a session with me before, um, there's a there's a, a right way of doing it. There's a way of this doing something that you've practiced before, and there's my way doing something that you haven't practiced before live. Um, and I'm going to do it this way because I think it, it could work. All right. So what we need to do is we need to con take these as individual elements now. Um, so what we probably need to do is we're going to create another little artboard, and I'm going to create. Right, um, maybe that, and we'll go 160 for that. And 20 maybe. Right, okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, I need to make 26 of these um, boxes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to group that. I'm going to move that into there. Um, and make that a little bit smaller. I'll copy it actually. Okay, and then I'm going to copy me artboard. There's me. Use that as D. Oh, there we are. Sorry. Remove that. I'm going to put B in there. D. Group that, put that in there. Copy, as I can do. Paste in place, and so on and so forth, right? And what I'll do is I'll do a few more just to experiment. I'll do ABC just to make sure it works, and then we it doesn't work. I haven't wasted everybody's valuable time. Um, as you can see, X aren't the same size and what have you, but. Um, Let's just see, shall we? So, I've got my text. Quick summary. On some, um, uh, some of my own font from there. I thought it looked boring, so I put a smiley face behind them to make it look a little bit different. Um, took a photograph of it, put it into the computer, um, and then I traced, a, used an auto trace function in Illustrator to, um, to create these individual um, elements. Okay. What I'm doing now is I'm putting each of these individual elements on their own page or artboard, okay? And what I will do and what I'll need to do is I need to do 26 of them. Um, but I'm going to make sure this works first. So what I'm going to do is export these three boards. Again, I'm not going to explain everything I'm doing here because... Um, this is not what session is about. So bear with me while I do it. If you can follow me, that's great. If not, don't worry. Um, the session is just about showing you how to create your own font um, in 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 a linear path. Okay, not how all the tools and fancy techniques and that. Um, so I've done that. I'm gonna export my font am I I'm gonna try PNG no I don't I'm gonna try PNG I don't think you can do it I've seen it done on as a um I've seen it done as a PNG before and there was an absolutely brilliant video that where this young I'm gonna say kid he must have been around about 10 years old doing a tutorial on um, the next phase of this what we, I'm going to show you in a minute and I only got halfway through because I didn't have enough time but that is on the presentation as well this young lad was absolutely <laughs> brilliant and his, pre his presentation was fantastic um, he'll put this in any of my I'd then go back and watch any of my, my presentations um, 
because I, I guess like everybody else, um, well, not not everybody, but most people don't like to hear the sound of their own voice. Um, and I, this guy, this young lad, was absolutely fantastic, um, absolutely brilliant. So, um, and he was really informative as well. So, if you want things clarifying, the link will be in the presentation. Um, I'll show you there, and I'll I'll just quickly get, at the end of the session, I'll show you um what I'm talking about in terms of his video because his video is really good. I'm just all right okay a b and c okay need c in there we'll just do a and b for now right so the next stage to that is so we haven't done anything complicated guys we've just took drew out our alphabet we've put it into the computer and we've saved the individual bits that's all we've done so far okay we haven't done anything advanced for any of the tools or anything like that that's all we've done so if i go into our crafty type folder um trying to improve that one out of a hundred for organization i'll put in um font I'll type this happy type happy and i'll put another folder in there where it'll be a to z okay that is Uh, have I spelt letters wrong? I think I have. Let's double check to find letters here. Spelling's not my um, strong point. Letter and character. Oh no. I'll just expose myself for being. Um, expose my poor spelling anyway. Right, okay, so let's go here. Um, got me folder. We let this in there. Go into here. Come out of there, take these out, put them into my happy type folder, take them out, put them in there. Right, okay, great. So we have Illustrator here. We need to use another program. Um, and again, please guys, hold on with us, all right? There's nothing worse than somebody saying, especially if you're not familiar with computers, and somebody goes, Oh, we need to open this program, we need to do this, we need to do that. Just this is just a taster, okay? I will show you exactly how to do these and break them down in the step by step, a step by step process, okay? But we do need to go into another program. That, new, that other program's free. It's called um, Font Forge, okay? Um, and I'm going to show you that now. Uh, it's not After Effects, I don't know why that's open. Um, but we've got this Font Forge okay and i'm again i'm not going to explain the program because that's not what today's session is all about okay um i will explain it in the sessions that will, will happen after this one find that png and if we can't use png I'm, I have seen the PNG being used before. Maybe an image. Yes, I'm using an image. Um, I don't want to use an image though, but I'm gonna I'm gonna use an image for now. I don't want to use an image because I would like to put that. I'm gonna guess. Let's have a look. If I use an image and I type on a background, um, the white might come through as the image as well. Um, but for simple for this reason, for this purpose, we're gonna try it. Right, so that hasn't worked. Never mind. Didn't really want to do it. Didn't want to do it that way anyway. Okay. So let's cancel that. Again, guys, like I said, this is all a learning curve for me as well, so um, please go easy on us. Um, I'm going to save this and delete those. I'm going to export this as a different file. And let's go back to true font forge. 
and EPS maybe or SVG that definitely works so we'll save it as an SGV save as SGV there it is there okay and I'm going to use sorry guys this is in the way this is just a little glitch of the computer forget that um, I'm just going to use um, number two which is a that's number two the artboard two so I'm going to export artboard two save that don't know what any of that means so I'm just going to click yes I'm going to do the same thing again if I had 26 of those yeah it's a little bit time consuming but it's quite rewarding once you see um your own font i guess um in front of you and you can type whatever you want to type so file save as so file save as just going to do it two more times very quickly um sgv um artboard i'm going to call artboard three which is b um I'm going to put B and I'll do the last one file save as back in there back in there Let's take that to C okay and I didn't label the other one but I will we'll do it now so I'll go back in the folder happy there's me individual oh, there's B take that out Two A again doesn't seem to be there. Um, a okay. Now this did work last time, so let's give this a whirl and see. Close that, cancel that. File edit uh, file. This is um, this little box here where I'm at now. This is font four. This is where we bring in our fonts. Okay, and there's our letters. SGV is there. There's our A, B, and C. So if I import A, click OK. Oh, the A is actually C. Okay, kind of messed up a bit there, but never mind. It's working. It's working. Um, import. Ah, I see what I've done. File, save as. A. Use that artboard, which is two. It just sounds as though I'm waffling on, so I maybe it should stop. But anything that is important, I'll point out. Okay, so don't worry. Sometimes I just like to talk as I'm doing something. Um, so we're going to import those three little files, and obviously you'd have to do it another 23 times to get all the other bits in. Um, so we import that. There's your A file import. So this is the second time I've done this, so B import C. Okay. And then you would do that for all the rest. If you wanted to bring in these special characters, you would have to do them first on the on your board or your sketch pad or whatever. Um and then there's special characters like pound signs. Um, copyright signs if you but it's pointless doing these ones if you don't need to guys and, and what you can do as well is you could have your basic um alphabet and your your full stop your comma your explanation mark and then later on if you realize there was a need for um further uh, special characters you just update that later okay so what all i've got is a a b and c at the minute i don't have the rest but I'm going to file and save that in my folder. I reckon my organization um, has gone up from one to about two and a half in today's session. Just saying. Um, so I'll create a new folder in there. Call this Font Forge. And I'm not sure how all the. Um, All the graphic designers do it, do it out there, but I guess as, as long as you've got some, a little bit of 
um, structure the way your files are should be all right type and it is our font okay um, go back a minute I'm going to cancel that I'm going to go again because I think I've got my insert um, button activated on my keyboard and what that does is it type it gets rid of the um, it types over things as opposed to typing in front of things okay and I don't want to do that because it was getting rid of the um, the format of the, the file there um, and the computer won't be able to recognize it when I come to open it later um, go back in there far front forge right so I've pressed if you ever find that happening and I'm going to do it just to demonstrate this has got nothing to do with um, our um, creating our fo our fonts but insert is at the top uh, right hand area of your keyboard and if I press it once it should activate it and if I start typing can you see how it's typing over the letters so be careful if it ever happens it's you, you've pressed insert by accident okay so now I'm up activated and now I'm typing in front of it you see okay so we go go on this happy font no type happy wasn't it type happy T Y T E happy get rid of that that's the file for font forge we're going to save that okay so I'm going to demonstrate to you um, now it working obviously we've only got three letters at the minute so um, just need to export that um, generate fonts okay we'll call this type happy test and my thing is activated again I don't know why it keeps on happening because I, I didn't do it that time honest um, I'll press it again insert take that off type happy T I think it might be a glitch with this this um, program. To be fair, um, or when you type really quick. One last time, because when I seem to type quick, it seems to happen. So we'll type a little bit slower. T Y. It's happening again, and I didn't activate it that time, so I'm not sure. It must be a little. This is an open source program, guys. So what that means is it's available for everybody to use, and everybody is, um, contributes can comp contribute to its development. So it's not like a um, Adobe Photoshop or something like that, where you've got like a it's a business where um, company's got a lot of money behind it. It's basically the community, the worldwide community kind of work um, to build this free open source program. Okay, so that's sometimes why these aren't as kind of slick as the other programs. There's a really cool um, plugin for Illustrator that does this um, a lot easier, but it costs you money. Um, so um, this is what we do. So I've changed this to a TTF file. TTF file um, is to true te uh, true type format it's one um, format one common fam format for your fonts okay um, I'm gonna generate me fonts now I'm gonna don't know what any of that means I haven't got time to read it and I'm just gonna press um, I haven't pressed re review before so let's see what that means um, doesn't look good cause it's in red and every every time I had um I've, I've seen red text it was when um when I was doing something wrong at school, so let's see why why D E happy get rid of that true text format. Yes, we're happy with that. I've just done it again because um, I was interested to see what that review meant, um, and now it looks scary. I'm just going to ignore it. 
right? So save our Illustrator file in case I um, haven't already. If we go back to Crafty Font Forge, which is a folder that we created, and there's our font there, right? So can you remember um, right at the very beginning of this um, pro, uh, very beginning of this session, I downloaded a um, file from this website and it was this text here Berlin graffiti we downloaded it didn't we and there it is there in that zip file okay if I open that zip file that's what it looks like there's a symbol there I can maybe make that symbol a bit bigger for you that's what it looks like that's the symbol for the true text font size the type I think it is um, and that's all the characters and everything is contained within that file for the Berlin graffiti one, which is isn't any of those, um, but it's we installed it and it's um, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, further up Berlin, Berlin, there it is. There, okay, great. So If we go um, to our Font Forge folder and I make this bit a little bit bigger, um, there is our true text, um, true type um, font file. If I install it the same way I installed um, the one right at the beginning of the session, um, the other one that we downloaded from dafont.com. If I go to here, we called it happy type happy, didn't we? If I go to here, it should have installed now because I just installed it under T. T, Y, 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 Y. C, C. No, it's not that one. Um, let me. File save desktop um, I'm gonna close this down. Sometimes you have to close down programs in order for the program to um, bring up the new fonts that you've um, installed. So that's all I'm doing here. Um, bring that up again. Hoping this is going to work. Cause it did work when I done my test last time. So KD. Hmm. Let's have a look. Right, we run out of time, guys, and we're right at the cusps of. Fantastic greatness. <laughs> um, I have seen this work and I would like to show you it working before we finish for the day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to close that down. I'm going to open for Font Forge again. We're going to give it one last blast. Okay, it doesn't seem to have worked. It hasn't brought it in. I think it might be... I think it might be this font here, the untitled one. Okay. Um, but let's have a, one last roll of the dice before um, we break for the day. I'll really love to be able to show you this because we're very, very close to getting it to work because I've, I've, I've practiced it before. Um, so let me... Um, my graphics, we've got teaching, crafty creators, crafty type, font, no, come out of there. Type happy letters, take that to there, take that to there. We want A, import, correct, and scale, fit, default, okay, there's A file import 
Okay. Please work. Import C. If not, there is plenty of resources within that um, within that um, presentation that um, I've put together for you guys, um, and they'll probably explain it a lot better. But let's just hope it does. Um, I'm just going to say test. True text format TT. Um, is there another one? Let's try instead. Symbol. Let's. Ah, right. No bitmaps. Maybe that might be it. Um, true type. Options. What are these options here? True hints. Open type. Output. Just looking at a few of these, or that could have changed. I haven't. When I made it work last time, I didn't change any of these. Let's just give it another while, shall we? Um, generate that. No name. No rename. Okay. That's. Let's try that. Generate. Okay. Let's read that quickly. The conversion of the true type font should have a EM size, which is a power of two, but it's a size of. But this has a size of a thousand. Okay. Okay. Element. Font info dialog box. Uh, do you wish to continue? No. Let's try that. Element font info general file generate. So, um Element font info general dialog box element So close, guys, but yet so far. Um, let me just check something quickly. Uh, close. Let's open a different program. Let's open. Um, Let's see if this is in here. Right, okay, here we go. Um, it's untitled one, okay, the font. Well, Click my text tool. This is an illustrator, okay? Forget about these. This is just the artwork we use to create the font. This should work. Um, but it doesn't. Okay, I'm going to have to um, ad admit defeat here and figure out why that hasn't worked. But it did work last time. Um, but if you look very closely there, you should be able to see like the little symbols of the text.
one last time guys quarter past this is going to be the cutoff right i just need that really really keen to show you this working i don't want to um leave you thinking that you've wasted your time so let's um i'm gonna have one last attempt at making this for you and then i'll have to um chuck in the towel i'm afraid but it did actually work last time um let's Right, what I'm gonna, what I think has happened, could be completely wrong here, but okay, and you've, I think the, t the the pixel size might be too big, is I guess. Right, so let's copy this. I'm gonna put this into a new document now, just to remove any issues. Um, that we had before. So I'm take them away. I'm going to put A in. I'm only going to do it with A, just to demonstrate. Hopefully, it working. If we know it works for A, it should work for the rest. So file, save as. I'm going to export that as an SGV. I'm going to call this. Um, I'm going to save it in a different location. I'm just going to put it there. I'm going to put, call that A. So we know it's a different one. Click OK. Go to Font Forge. OK. Hopefully, you can just delete those, can you? Mm. Let's close Font Forge. Don't save. Let's open it again. Right, here we go. Right, so create a new document file. We're gonna go to A, we're gonna paste that or import that from the desktop from my graphics from my teaching folder, crafty creators, crafty type, font forge. We've got it as an SGV file. Okay. A, that was it, yeah. So click import. Okay. Okay, and there it is in there. Okay. If I generate that, um, generate font. Oh, it's test now. Okay. Generate. I'm gonna click yes because that's what I clicked last time. Click generate. Right. I do apologise if this doesn't work. I'll have to figure out why it doesn't. Got really excited there, didn't I? And crashed into a ball of flames. Right. Um, there is a test there. Let's install that test. It's already installed. You want to place it? Yeah, let's place it. Right. Get rid of that. Don't save. Um, so there's the A character assigned to that um so we know that works let's install it do you yeah no we don't really want to install it stop that close that um let's go to our word pad and it was called and titled wasn't it let's put an a in there on title that bottom Ah, right. So there we go. Didn't work. Sorry. Um, really, I'm sorry. Um, there is literally 
one or two issues in that whole process because that is basically you know what you need to do um, and it is coming in but um, I'm not sure why it's not um, let me just check one last time <clears throat> Right, here we go. It is working in Illustrator. For, for some reason, it's not working in um, WordPad. There's a text there. And as you can see, I can't type anything else in because I've just um, generated that one font, which was A. And as you can see from the flashing um, cursor, there's the normal A, which we don't have. And there's there's the actual A for the untitled, which is there. Can you see? So if I then do whatever I've done there for all for B, C, all the way to Z, I should be able to type out sentences from that. Okay. So it does work there. Um, for some reason, it's not working here. Yes, it is. Maybe it just needed me to panic and sweat a little bit for it to work i think that's what it needed it need needed some nerves sweat um and foolishness from my behalf from my my side to embarrass us enough to actually work but there you go there's an a <laughs> so we just need to do that 26 times guys that'll be days and then um <laughs> you have made your own point <laughs> right so I'll review all this um, in the session one um, next week. I'm so glad that it's worked. Um, I'm not too sure what the glitches were, and obviously we'll, we'll need to rename that. But we're pretty much there now. So what I'll do for next session, session one of um, Crafty Type, is I'll install all those tech, all those uh, individual symbols into Font Forge. A all the way to Z. So next week I'll be at demonstrator working. Okay, I'm I'm not too sure why it was happening there. Maybe the computer just needed a minute for it to work out um, that there was actually a character assigned to it. Um, but that's it. Okay, we've gone over it a little bit, but I really was desperate to show you that it was working. Okay, uh, and you please please bear with me. This this is all new to me, and I'm only learn I only want to learn it so I can show you. And it is a simple process that um, it doesn't doesn't look very simple because I'm not 100% sure. But I'm hoping that my um, me not knowing would give you the confidence to try it as well because nothing bad happened. We just need, I need to redo it a few times to to make it to see if it works. And as you can see there, there's there wasn't really a, an explanation of why it wasn't working. Um, but it worked at the end end of the day. Okay, so um. Hopefully that's whet your appetite for um, the positive sides of this session. I hope that's whet your appetite for what you can maybe expect to see in the next um, five sessions of Crafty Type. Um, basically, we are going to mess up. We've, we've created our own font today. Okay, we'll give it a little bit of a, a twist in, um, in Illustrator. And there it is there. Excuse me. I'll give it a little bit of a twist and try to give it a little smiley face to just make it look a little bit different and make it stand out. And eventually we got it to work. Okay, so I'll review this um, a little bit more smoothly um, at the beginning of next session. Um, and then what we'll do is um, we'll start looking at a little bit of the important stuff. Okay, well, when I say important stuff, it, you might not think it's important, but the people who are teaching um, um, typography, they're really serious guys, they're serious graphic designers, um, follow some rules. So I'm going to show you their rules. You can take on board what you want from that. You might think it's useful, you might not. But what we're going to do at the end of the, the course is we're going to have this um, font, okay, this set of fonts, and we're going to have... Um, the end at the end in session five we're gonna have 
the rev the revised version of the this font based on the rules that um the typographers um, um follow okay and then we can see whether we prefer this one or prefer the other one but hopefully it'll give you a bit more of an understanding on what is involved in typography okay um whoa, let's have a quick um butchers at um Right, so um, there's a lot of information in here that I'm going to be referring to, and this is a slides and this is a presentation of um, Crafty Type, and this is just kind of my notes on create um, creating the session for you. All right, but um, this isn't specifically for this one session, so I'll, I'll create a taster session uh, version of what we've covered, make that available on our YouTube descriptions, um, and then we're going to look at some of the a little bit of the theory um, behind as we develop an our font um, a little bit later on okay so basically it's crafty creatives and this is crafty type um, and what we're trying to do is in order to appreciate something we need to have an understanding and what we're trying to do is develop an understanding on typography okay and that's what crafty types is all about okay so um, I did promise you one last Thing before I, I, I go and it was this young lad here um, I'll have to show you that next week I think because I don't can't find it but there's some really cool um, really cool links to some um, um, different different links to different videos to do with typography there um, I've come across this thing um, I think it might be interesting if any of you have got next Netflix this is called abstract it's a series that they do and it's the art of design okay and the trailer is pretty cool um, I'm not gonna waste your time now because we're running over but um, have a look at that and it, they, they focus each episode focuses on different elements of design and like kind of how art how art kind of impacts that discipline in design so we look they look at footwear design they look at photography they look at interior design was the one i was watching yesterday typography is on there and that's by one guy that we're going to be looking at in a bit more detail in the forthcoming weeks um the we where is that um uh, it might be this no it's not that one Okay, I'll have to find that um, for you next week. So um, if you could please um, fill in our enrollment form. We've made it streamlined it now. It's available online. You can just fill in your basic details. that will um, log you in to, to um, our our course. And then I'll send you the link for session one um, privately. Okay, and then that will let you um, fill in, in this one enrollment form will allow you access to the, the rest of the five-week course. Please fill in our online survey. Be kind. Obviously, I'm not... Uh, type typ typographer i'm just trying to show you um how a, a basic um human being like myself can actually create their own font um, and hopefully i've done that today um okay then guys that, that's it for today um thanks very much for tuning in thanks for your patience um please fill in our forms are really important for our um, funders um and have a cracking weekend and i'll catch up with you next thursday all right thanks very much cheers